if we should start with how you reflect now on that World Cup campaign. So much glory and then just at the final moment, unfortunate result. So when you look back, do you think to yourself how magnificent it was or do you have other reflections? Well, firstly, I feel honoured to be coaching England and, and I think we put a lot of pride and, and passion back into the English game. Uh, yeah, just coming back to England, the number of reports of more kids playing rugby is fantastic. So I think the guys did a great job. And, but obviously we were disappointed in the final. We didn't play to our, our best. In the book, you talk a little bit about maybe your selection was slightly wrong on the day. Hindsight's a great thing. But was it just the South Africans, I mean, not wanted it more, but their game on the day stifled the creativity that England were trying to play with and we just couldn't get into our rhythm? Yeah, well, I think there was a number of factors. It's, it's never simple. Um, but we had a, a good run into the World Cup. Uh, we played well against New Zealand and, and we had to come back down and then get up again for South Africa. South Africa built up to the final and they started the game really well and we couldn't get on the front foot at any stage in the game. What were your feelings after the game? I mean, obviously as coach, but also, you know, just as individually, personally, how long does it take you to get up again? Oh, look, I was really proud of the players. I thought they were absolutely fantastic and great ambassadors for, for English rugby. Um, Personally, I remember waking up about two days after the World Cup final and, and seeing the South African number nine hovering over the top of me. So it wasn't a pleasant experience. <laughs> he gets um, everywhere that he's, path, he's, he? he's not in the bedroom anymore, which is good. <laughs> yeah, he's everywhere. Um, is it something that's interesting, you, uh, what you say about your reflections on it? Because I just wonder whether uh, there were nights when you dreamt perhaps it had gone differently and then woke up and, and the reality hit you again. Is that something that happens? Uh, no, not at all. Look, we always knew the final was going to be tough. Um, and whenever you get in a World Cup final, you know, it's literally a, a toss of the coin. Um, so we never looked ahead to what could have been. I think Warren Gatland made a, a comment, didn't he? Mikey said this on Twitter about England's World Cup final was that game against New Zealand, which is one of the most extraordinary games. I mean, I'm a big rugby fan, Eddie, and I love following England through the World Cup. I think you all did an extraordinary yeah. job. But as you say, there was sort of the, 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 the glory of that performance against what is widely considered to be the strongest team going into the tournament, the, the New Zealanders, certainly as they were playing. Mm. Well, I think the point is it took a lot out of us. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we had to be at our best to beat New Zealand, otherwise you don't get to the final. And it did take a lot out of us physically and emotionally and, and the job was in that week to get them back up and, and I didn't do a good enough job. Mm. What did you say to the players afterwards? Uh, pretty much what I've said to you now, you know, great job. You played with a lot of pride and passion. Yeah, we, we had two targets at the World Cup. One was to win the World Cup and two for it to be an unforgettable experience for the players. You know, so the World Cup finish, we didn't want it to end. And I think most of the players had that experience. So, you know, sometimes you don't win the scoreboard, but you win other things. So the players can rely on the coach to try and pick them up and get them going again. You talk a lot about your family and your wife in the book. How does she get Eddie Jones up? How did she get you out of the sort of the down post World Cup and then into starting the new challenge for the Six Nations? Oh, she's pretty much like my uh, mother. She doesn't have much sympathy, she says, just get on with it. And what about the Six Nations then, Eddie? I mean, we'll all be very keen to see how England bounce back from the disappointment of the final. Obviously, France are sort of playing, uh, certainly seem to be a force that are coming through. Their under-20s won that World Cup as well. How are you feeling about that challenge? What's going to be success in the Six Nations for England this time round? Oh, look, we want to win it, mate. You know, <laughs> we want to win the trophies. We want to get back on the horse, get on the get holding that trophy, not, not holding a, a silver medal. So it's, it's going, one of the f first things we're going to have to do is obviously go over the final and work out what players felt, uh, mm. where we need to go emotionally and, and together as a team, and then play some good rugby during the Six Nations. So it should be a great tournament. Sounds like you're going to have to force yourself to watch that final back, Eddie Jones. 
At some stage, yes, I will. <laughs> Putting it off, though, for the time being. Eddie, we really appreciate you joining us and getting up early to talk to us this morning. Uh, your autobiography, which I've already started reading and is gripping, is out now. It's Eddie Jones, My Life and Rugby. I thoroughly recommend it. Uh, incredibly honest uh, appraisal of everything yeah. in your rugby career and your life as well. Thanks for joining us, Eddie. I'm sorry we don't have more time. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Nice to see you. The most popular Australian since Kylie Minogue over here, I think. Yeah. Eddie Jones, no doubt. Just for you personally? Yeah. <laughs>